This is Scott Robbins, W4PA, and this is a demonstration video of how to properly install a PL259 connector onto RG213 coax. The video appears unedited six minutes long. That's approximately how long it should take you to properly install a connector onto the coax. First thing you want to do is put the shell of the connector over the coax. You're not going to be happy later if you get the connector body soldered on and you don't have that on there. Line the body of the connector up with the coax so the top of the coax roughly is along with the top of the connector. You want to cut the cable uh, at the bottom of the second ridge on the body of the connector. Cut through the jacket, the braid, and the dielectric. The jacket and the braid will come off fairly easy. The dielectric will be a little bit harder to cut. As you're cutting through the dielectric, you want to be careful not to nick or cut the center conductor. It'll probably take several cuts. It's on there fairly tightly. And once you've made all the cuts and can wiggle it a little bit, you'll want to gently pull off the remainder of the dielectric with a small pair of pliers. Okay, once you've removed the dielectric, get the soldering iron out and you want to just tin the center conductor just a little bit. That'll help solder flow into the tip of the connector once you actually install the body on the cable. Okay, now take the connector body again and line it up with the cable. What you want to do is cut off more of the jacket down to approximately an eighth of an inch above where the bottom of the shell of the connector is. Being careful not to nick or cut the braid. Once you've done this a couple of times, you'll get a feel for when you can almost feel the braid on the blade of the knife. Take the body of the connector and slowly insert it onto the cable. Being careful not to move the braid around. We'll need to twist it a little bit to get it onto the end of the cable. Now you're ready to solder the tip. Note that the center conductor of the coax is sticking out of the tip about an eighth of an inch. Now to solder the braid to the body of the connector. Put the soldering iron on the connector and let it sit across one of the holes for about 20 seconds to get the connector body good and hot. Start flowing some solder into the hole. You'll find that the first hole is a little bit harder than the others to solder because the connector is still heating. You may have to put a little solder on there. Continue to apply heat to get it to melt adequately into the hole and to flow onto the braid. After you've got that first one, the shell of the connector should be hot enough now that you can, uh, working quickly, solder the other holes. As long as that uh, connector is still hot, the solder should flow fairly easily into the hole and adhere to the braid. 
You may even go back at the end and uh, redo the first hole if it isn't to your liking, though I didn't have to do that in this case. Solder will flow down into the hole and leave a little bit of a concave impression of where the hole is once it's flowed down and, and into the braid. Okay, we've got that on. Now you remember you put your shell on at the beginning. I'm using a short piece of coax here as an example and it came off. So now I'm putting it back on, screwing it across the body of the connector. Be careful because this thing is good and hot at this point. And there you have it. Trim off the extra eighth of an inch that was sticking out of the top of the connector. And there you have it, a PL259 installed properly on RG213 in less than six minutes.